Hey guys, it's Disembodied Geo here, and today we are going over all the geeky stuff I got in the month of May. It's haul time. From the folks at Seven Seas, here we have Die Dark Volume 1 from Q Hayashida. I really like this book. I love the dimensions of it. It's quite small compared to the size of other releases, but I don't know. It's, it's cute and charming in its own disgusting little way because look at that great grim artwork right there looking all kinds of awesome and the inside you know it retains the colored pages which is always great always cool to see here you can see that in full detail look at this spread right here looking really awesome if you like Doro Hedoro, you know you're gonna be right at home with this it's super chaotic grotesque fun and action-packed when it needs to be yeah, just overall really cool, in my opinion. And I'm happy to get into this. And and I love that we already have this Volume 1, right? <laughs> you know, we could have been stuck waiting years for this to be released, but we're already on Volume 1. Hopefully uh, more volumes come out in Japan so we get the rest of the series as quickly as possible. Speaking of long-running series, here is... The Ancient Magus Bride, Volume 14. I really do need to catch up. This looks great as always. I love this series. I think I'm on Volume 7 or 8. So I really do need to catch up on this and find out what the heck is happening in this volume. But here you see some of that artwork looking really, really cool. Now we move on to the folks at Kodansha. And this is something that I've always wanted to get since I first saw the anime 2019. Uh, it is Vinland Saga. So I started getting into Vinland Saga. Here's volume one, or book one, I should say. Right there with that wonderful, beautiful artwork. Yeah. This is such an awesome series. I love the show. I fell in love with that series. And yeah, it's on everybody's collection. And I said, you know what, yeah. I'll get that too. I'll act like everybody else and get it. <laughs> no, but truthfully, it's it's a wonderful series uh, regardless. And I, I was super excited to start getting into this, uh, reading the original source material and owning uh, the hardcovers. So there's uh, book one of uh, Vinland Saga. Next up is a series that I thought, you know, I don't really have much uh, rom-coms in my collection simply because of limited space and uh, the few that I have are usually in blu-ray format you see my uh, Billy shelf right there but for manga uh, I really like the show and I thought why the heck not I'll grab it <laughs> so here is uh, a really wild purchase but I'm really excited about it because I really like I said just now I really like the show so I'm gonna continue reading the series and it's rent a girlfriend so here's volume one of that series here we have volume two. I'll show you the artwork in a little bit if you've never seen it before. Here is volume three, volume four, and I have here with me volume five. Here is some of the artwork you can find inside of this book, Rent the Girlfriend. Right there. I really love the design of the characters and just the overall style of the series. And like I said, the, the series, uh, it has a little uh, tropey jokes here and there and standard rom-com fare, but it's, it's fun. Basically, you're following uh, Kazuya Kinoshita. He recently had a bad breakup with Mami-chan, which a lot of people hate online. A lot of people hate that character. Uh, here is Mami-chan right there on the cover. Bad breakup, she's super popular and cute and... I believe it only lasted like a month and he was super psyched because it's, you know, the hot popular girl in college and all that stuff. So he he decides to try the rent a girlfriend service thing where you basically, you are renting a girlfriend for a day, I think. You go on all sorts of activities and whatnot. So that's how you meet this girl right here, Chizuru. And as luck would have it, our main character actually ends up falling in love with uh, Chizuru and all sorts of hijinks ensue. 
uh, really fun stuff. Uh, I really enjoyed the show, like I said earlier. So I was happy to uh, get this fan servicey stuff aside. Uh, it's a fun uh, comedy. Moving on to the folks at Viz Media. I'm surprised every time how many uh, licenses they have currently. And it just turns into a ridiculous hall that I should name the Viz Hall here at A Week in Geekdom because there's so many books out there. But this next title I've already read. This isn't my first rodeo on that. I have the anime for it. Um, but I wanted to own, I want to own the manga. Uh, just, uh, you know, as a fan of the story, I want to uh, own every single volume. And this is, if you can believe it or not, the 12th printing. Again, I didn't have this, so I was a little bit late on the train. Now it's kind of hilarious that the 12th printing is the one I decided to get. And that's, of course, Hunter Hunter. Here's volume one of that. As you can see with the new Shonen Jump logo or the recent one, Viz logo right there at the bottom. So this is really insane that it's been reprinted so many times. But that is just a testament of how popular this series is, right? That you would have so many printings and it still sells out and everybody wants to grab this series. But I do think, you know, this is one of those emblematic series that do represent uh, Shonen manga as well as Shonen Jump and all that fun stuff. So yeah, Hunter Hunter Volume 1. I do have uh, the volumes after the anime. So I, now I just need to get Volume 2 all the way to Volume 31, I think, or 30, something like that. So that's gonna be fun. Yay! Here is uh, more Legend of Zelda. Uh, here is Twilight Princess Volume 3, continuing that series as well. And let me show you a little bit of the art here. Um, I don't know if you follow, you probably do follow the Legend of Zelda series, right? It's world famous. But just in case you've never heard of it, and you don't want to track down the ridiculously expensive uh, games, the uh, older ones, because, you know, retro gaming is so expensive these days, you can read the manga with wonderful illustrations and follow the Twilight Princess story in this format. And of course, here's volume four. Here's the cover for volume five. Volume six. I gotta say, while I love the art on the manga, I, I don't really like any of the covers, to be honest with you. Um, I, I find it kind of boring and repetitive to just have a link on the covers for these volumes, but the art in this is just phenomenal. I mean, look at that. So cool. I made a first impressions video on my channel. Here is Asadora Volume 2 from Naoki Urusawa. I'm not going to show too much because this is a fairly new series, but you can check out that video where I talked a little bit about it. Here's some colored pages. Looking really awesome. Yeah. Continuing my Pokemon journey, here is Pokemon Adventures Volume 7. I believe Volume 10 is going to be the last one, which is a shame. I hope they put out the other uh, series in this large format, because this is such a fun uh, series to read. I really do enjoy it. And I think, aside from the games, one of the best representations of the Pokemon franchise, in my opinion, has to be this manga, in my honest opinion. Really cool stuff there. Next up, Shoujo Beat Action. I don't really have any Shoujo in my library, even though I have read some uh, digitally. And this is a series that I've always wanted to get into. And I know it's a long running series, so yeah, <laughs> I have to make space for it because I think we're up to volume 30 or 33 might be mistaken on that if you know uh, let me know in the comment section thank you so much um, here is Yona of the Dawn volume one this series is constantly going out of print by the way uh, or out of stock and you have to wait a long while to get some of these volumes but here's volume two and volume three so I got the first three volumes to get started on that I've always wanted to read it I like what the story's about, and the art looks really cool. I love the drawings on this, and the way the characters look, yeah. So yeah, I'll probably do some sort of video on this, even though the series is extremely popular, and I am late to the game. I still want to make a video on it, just as a, 
uh, I don't know, just to have it on the channel, me talking about Yona of the Dawn. Maybe for some newcomers like myself that want to know more about this. So yeah, more Junji Ito action. I missed this uh, last month. It is Junji Ito's story collection, Love Sickness, right there. Let's take a look at the spine. This time is green. Here's some of that awesome artwork. Don't have to say too much. I think everybody, if you're on YouTube searching for manga, you know about Junji Ito, right? So this is another set of wonderful short stories. I'll probably do a video on this soon-ish, but yeah. Got a feel for that creepy artwork. Look at that, that's gross. And to finish off the series from Tayo Matsumoto, I had been mentioning for the past two hauls that I was getting sunny. So here's the uh, final books of that. Here we have volume four with that wonderful textured feel. I love these books. Here's volume five right there and volume six. So I am already reading this and will make a proper series review as soon as I can, but yeah. There's a couple pages from the book so you can see the wonderful art. Hope I'm not spoiling anything because I just picked volume six <laughs> randomly to show you guys. But yeah, Sunny from Tayo Matsumoto. And here is Inuyasha, set five, episodes one, 112 to 139, so we're one more set away to completing the original Inuyasha series on Blu-ray. That is amazing, I love it. Inuyasha is one of my all-time favorite anime, but I would need the final act set on Blu-ray to have everything, so yeah, really excited about this. I do get collected editions, comic book-wise, graphic novels, and here is East of West, The Apocalypse Year 3 from Jonathan Hickman. Really love this series. I can finally do a proper read through and uh, maybe do a review or a discussion video or maybe a live stream on it. I don't know, but I'm excited to talk about this. Here's a nice action scene right there. Got to throw a little gaming action, of course. I love me some video games and I got a little bit of everything. For the Xbox One, I missed the hype train when it first released. But what's good about this is that you can get it for cheap later on, because yay, the second hand aftermarket. Uh, here is Resident Evil 3 Remake for Xbox One. I am collecting the Resident Evil series in uh, for the Xbox. Uh, for PlayStation 4, we've got Battle Chasers Night War. I was originally gonna get it for the Switch, but that fell through and I found a cheaper copy for the PS4. Something that I've always been wanting to get here is Disgaea 1 Complete. Uh, ever since this came out many, many, many years ago, I've always wanted to play it. Never got uh, a chance to grab a copy until now. Um, back then, I guess just the art style, the fact that it was very uh, anime and manga inspired. I was really excited about this, but never got to play it. But now on the Switch, I'm ready to sink in I don't know, what, 100 hours of my life into this? So let's go. Here we have a uh, new Pokemon Snap, which is awesome that this exists. I'm so happy with this game. I remember playing the N64 version. Uh, I didn't, I never owned it. I played it maybe like four times. I rented the game at uh, Blockbuster back in the day until I finished it, but I never owned it per se. But this is really fun that now so many years later, I can own some form of Pokemon Snap on the Switch. So that's really cool. Love it. And from Limited Run, here we have Fighting Rage. Side scroller, pixel based beat em up. There's the insides, got the card. It comes with stickers, which is really cool. I wish more companies would put the effort to do stuff like this at no additional cost. And there's the uh, booklet and the cart. Here's a little bit of, of the action right there at the back. It's very uh, anime inspired. Looks really cool. Plays great. I do recommend it. Fight and Rage. For my continuing Metroid collection that I'm building, uh, I didn't know this existed. I saw it on a YouTube video and I Googled it. And before prices start spiking up, because that's just my luck, <laughs> uh, I got... <clears throat> the 
Metroid Prime, Metroid Fusion 2-in-1 Strategy Guide. Not that I'm going to replay these games, maybe Fusion, because I've, I've never actually finished that game. But uh, I just wanted to have this. I just wanted to have uh, all the accessible uh, collectibles and memorabilia and thingamajigs for the Metroid franchise that I can get my hands on. That's not too pricey, too uh, hard to find. But yeah, really excited about this. I had no idea that they made a two-in-one, so I'm excited. Great cover right there. Two of the best games, in my opinion. But before I close out the video, this is something really cool that I wanted to show you guys. I've been waiting patiently for this to arrive. Let's see, can I place it here? Yeah, it does fit, all right. <laughs> so that is the Astro City Mini from Sega. That came out last year. Unfortunately, when the pandemic started, I heard about it and I had it pre-ordered through, was it Ami Ami, I think. And uh, they canceled all the shipping because of the pandemic and you could only do, eventually, like in the summer or something, you could only do DHL. And I don't, I'm sorry, I'm not a fan of DHL. And over at my address, they're terrible. I have to say it like that. So, um, I, uh, I had to cancel the order because of the pandemic and I was really disappointed because I had opened my second channel, Geo's Arcade, where, you know, it's a work in progress, but I am going to be making uh, video game content there, streams, reviews, unboxing, stuff like that, mostly streams, uh, playing games, retro games and all that. And I made a video talking about the Astro City Mini and how I've always wanted, that's one of my goals in life, I guess. I don't know if I'll ever make it, but it's it's something fun to look forward to, I guess. I, I've always wanted to uh, play one of those uh, big ones in real life in Japan, and I don't know, uh, maybe own either an Astro City or a Candy Cab at some point. I know it's really impossible. It, it's not impossible, but really expensive, but yeah. So this was, to me at least, the next best thing. Fortunately, a company like uh, Limited Run uh, is there to pick up stuff like this and they did an official translation of the box and the machine inside I guess uh, with the arcade ROMs. I don't know how far the translation went if it's just for cosmetics but most of the games you don't even need the English dialogue to enjoy and play so it doesn't really bother me but it's really cool that it got localized and it gave me an opportunity this year to actually pick it up so yeah Look forward to an unboxing on that on my second channel, Geo's Arcade. All right, there you have it, folks. Uh, some things were missing. Uh, I made a pretty cool order of manga that did not arrive because when I made the order, one of the items got pushed back to June. So that held everything up. And then another item went out of stock. I thought it was in stock, but now I have to wait for it to get, <laughs> for it to return. So they'll ship the whole order together. It, it, it's a mess. But at least I made the order. It'll come eventually. We'll check it out on the channel when it does and have some fun with that. Thank you everybody for liking, commenting, subscribing, and being a part of A Week in Geekdom. This is really awesome. I love doing these videos. And if you're new here, you want to help a brother out, I do content like this where I go over hauls. I talk about anime, manga, and comic book reviews. All that fun stuff. Subscribe if you can. Hit the bell icon. So you know when new videos pop up. And uh, that's about it. I gotta go. Thank you so much once again. Catch you guys on the next video.